Algebra 1, Section 8.4, more multiplication properties of exponents. There are two. One of them is called uh, raising a power to a power. And uh, there's an example that's given here. A to the M to the N is equal to, the a, uh, is equal to a to the M times N. As in, uh, as you raise a power to another power, it ends up being that same base to the product of the two powers. The reason for that. 5 to the third to the second, for example. Well, 5 to the third is like saying 5 times 5 times 5. And when I raise something to the second power, it means multiplied by itself. So that's like saying 5 times 5 times 5 times another one of those things, 5 times 5 times 5, which we know to be 5 to the sixth. Or you could go ahead and apply a property from one of the previous lessons, the, the exact previous lesson, uh, excuse me, 8.3, and uh, that would be like saying 5 to the third times itself. Another, another reason, you know, what I'm saying is this or this, 5 to the third to the second power is like saying 5 to the third times itself. And we know then that since the bases are the same, we can add the exponents and you would still get 5 to the sixth. So what's the net result? Well, the net result is that we can multiply the powers. And again, that's not to be confused with uh, the previous lessons property, okay? Where you're adding exponents because you're multiplying powers. Here you're raising a power to a power, so you actually multiply the powers. Um, how does that work here? Well, 4 to the 11th to the 5th would simply be 4 to the 55th. I talked briefly in the previous lesson about uh, when you should simplify. Obviously, 4 to the 55th is a huge number. You should leave that just as it is here. If it was 4 to the 2nd, you ought to write 16. If it's 4 to the 3rd or 4 to the 4th, 4 to the 5th, something reasonable like that, even if you need to use your calculator, you should do that. But 4 to the 55th is ridiculous. Leave it like that. Uh, x to the 3rd to the 9th would be x to the 3 times 9, which is 27. Notice I didn't show the work on that. You can if you want to. I don't need to see you, you showing the 3 times 9. I assume everybody knows 3 times 9 is 27. The second property is raising a product to a power. Not a power to a power, but a product as in multiplication, raising two or more things being multiplied to a power. And what that always feels like to me is the distributive property. And it's not the distributive property, so I'm not saying that you should call it that, but it sort of feels like, here's the, pro here's the, um, the, uh, the property, excuse me, uh, a, B are being multiplied and they're being raised to the N. Well, that means raise N, excuse me, raise a to the nth power and raise b to the nth power. It's kind of like you're distributing the power of n to both of those things. Again, you won't find anywhere that calls it the distributed property because that's something different, but it is what it feels like. So again, why is that? Well, 5w to the third, that's like saying 5w times 5w times 5w. And again, another point that I made in, in the previous lesson is that when you have something like this, it's just six things being multiplied. It's five times W times five times W times five times W, which really is like saying five times five times five or five to the third and uh, also W to the third. W times W to, times W, which is W to the third. Now, in this case, you definitely should simplify that to 125 W to the third. Five to the third is 125. And then an example, a little bit more elaborate than the one we just did, uh, 3xy to the fourth. Well, that's like saying 3 to the fourth, x to the fourth, y to the fourth. And there's maybe even a clearer example where it really does feel like you're distributing the four. Every one of those things needs to be raised to the fourth power. You should take a moment and raise 3 to the fourth power on your calculator if you need to. That would be 81. So 81x to the fourth, y to the fourth is your final answer there. Okay, and then uh, really just these last four examples will kind of put those two properties together. Uh, four squared and x to the third squared is how we would apply the um, power of a product property. So four squared, x cubed squared. And again, I'm showing probably a little bit more work than you need to. Anyway, that's 16x to the 6th.
See, once we had uh, taken care of the product to a power, now we're going to take care of the power to a power that's within that, and 4 squared also, which is 16. Look over here. The power of 2 goes to each one of these three things. The power of negative 3 goes to what's in that second set of parentheses. So this is like saying 4 squared x squared y to the third to the second, which would be y to the sixth. And then that's multiplying x to the third to the negative third. And don't let the negative exponent bother you. Uh, it's still a power to a power. That's x to the negative ninth. Now, what applied in section 8.1 applies now. We will uh, have to move it and lose it with that negative exponent if it remains. Let's see if that happens. Uh, 4 squared is 16. Here you have x squared times x to the negative ninth. That is, uh, that is x to the negative seventh. That's the, pro the product property from 8.3. And then you still have y to the sixth. So yes, we should move it and lose it with that x to the negative seventh. And your answer will be 16 y to the sixth over x to the seventh. 16 and y to the sixth stay in the numerator. This is a positive exponent. x to the negative seventh, that's where you apply move it and lose it. That is correct. 16y to the 6th all over x to the 7th. Next one, power to a power here, that'd be c to the 6th, 2 times 3. Uh, product to a power here, this is 3 to the 4th, and then also c to the 5th to the 4th. I'll go ahead and simplify that uh, to the 5th to the 4th. That's a multiplying power. You, you want to multiply the powers. That's a power to a power, which is 20 c to the 5 times 4, or c to the 20th. And then two things. 3 to the 4th is 81. We should put the number first. And then a, uh, a product of powers, c to the 6th and c to the 20th. Their bases are the same. You can add the exponents. That's from section 8.3. This would be c to the 26th. So a final answer of 81, c to the 26th. Finally, and I guess right now would be the right time to say this too. Don't think about multiplying six and five yet and the M's yet. You got to take care of these powers first. The, the orders of operation that you learned years ago still apply here. We got to get rid of parentheses. We got to make uh, what's going to happen with the exponents happen before we start uh, combining things in other ways. This is six to the third, M to the third, N to the third times five squared, m to the negative sixth, negative three times two. Well, I wouldn't expect you to know what six to the third is right now. You will memorize that one in algebra two. It's 216. Okay. Now, just for uh, a little bit of ease, I'm going to go ahead and move this five squared over. So that's 25. I'll multiply those numbers next. Next, I'll go ahead and combine m to the third times m to the negative sixth. That would be m to the negative third. And lastly, you've got n to the third with nothing to combine it with, okay? Now, much like we did in this problem where you move it and lose it with the x to the negative seventh, we will have to do that with the m to the negative third. Uh, 216 times 25 is 5,400. n to the third is going to remain in the numerator, and then the denominator, because we did move it and lose it, is going to be m to the third. So an answer of 5,400 n to the third all over m to the third. Final answer. Okay, thanks for tuning in.